Country Talk Radio. You're in to all things music. My thought of being a musician is what we would do on the Sunset Strip, which, which right. was almost almost a parody of the real deal because we got it second handed. You know, we would go to watch a concert and and look up at Led Zeppelin or Deep Purple and say, OK, right. this is how these guys behave. And and so we're going to do the same thing and on uh, a club stage, you know. But what Sharon and Ozzy had in mind was the real deal. So I had to like really study and comprehend what the real deal rock musician is from mm -hmm. England, a place that I had never been to. <laughs> Come journey with us through the rhythm of the music business with your host, Jackie Bertoni. Everybody, welcome to Jackie's Groove, or better known as a Rock and Roll Wednesday. Hey guys, Jackie Bertoni, brought to you by Intertalk Radio Network. You're into all things music. Hey, you know what, man? I got to tell you, you let's put back our uh, jump in the time machine right now. And let's head back to the night, you know, the '80s actually. And uh, even though today is the uh, 21st of June, it's two o'clock, but we're going to go all the way back to, like I said, the '80s with groups like Quiet Riot and groups like White Snake. And the, of course, the, the godfather, Mr. Ozzy Osbourne. And we're talking about the man, the upside down backward bass player that made that playing in that area and that genre of music his. So with that said, guys, I want everybody to welcome with open arms and open ears, bass rock extraordinaire, Mr. Rudy Sarza. Rudy, welcome to Jackie's Groove, my brother. Thank you for having me, Jackie. Thank you so much. Oh, man. Hey, man. You know, I, I thank you and I thank, Fran, you know, Fran Strine for involving our network and Jackie's Groove on this amazing new documentary, in which I've said to Fran, a documentary that will be the template of all new rock documentaries to come. Um, I've seen it. I've been blessed and to have a private screening. I've seen it three times. And so has the uh, Paul, uh, the engineer and COO, and Florentino, the CEO, have just freaked out about it, man. i got to tell you, it gets better. you got to watch it over and over again. And it's only going to come out one day, June 29th. On 300 screens um, all over the nation, go to Fathom Events, that's F-A-T-H-O-M, events.com. Search for Hired Gun. You can put in your zip code. It'll tell you what theater it's going to be at. And as Francis says also, too, we're looking at, uh, hopefully within uh, a few weeks after that, Netflix and HBO and, and the like. So with that said, we're going to talk to Mr. Rudy Sarzer today, who is a featured musician in this amazing documentary. And, and Rudy, I wanted to start off the top saying itself, you know, welcome and thank you for being part of this, uh, this to me, which should be a series if HBO is listening. So with that said, share with the, your fans, share with the uh, fans worldwide, how was it doing this, uh, doing this amazing documentary when they came and uh, approached you with this? You know, yeah, that's, it's, it's, that's a very interesting process because I got the phone call from one of the producers and they mentioned, I, th I think the first person they did an interview for the documentary was Liberty DeVito. Right. And I thought, you know, then they mentioned other names that were going to be involved. And I, you know, and, and the producer's a friend of mine. So I said, sure, I would love to be involved. You know, but to me, what, what makes a really a strong documentary it, to me is, besides the editing, it's the director. Because that's all you basically have to work with. It's it's not a scripted. So the director gets together and does many interviews. And right. in my case, in my case with Fran, it was just him and I sitting face to face. He's off camera. And he's beginning to ask me some questions. And I could see it in his face. As soon as we got in, into certain territory, he started going in that direction. You know, right. I mean, he started, he started at, you know, bringing up subjects that are usually very 
painful for me to right. even revisit in my life. And he thought, okay, we got something that that is it's going to be strong, a strong uh, storyline for the mm-hmm. documentary because the documentary touches in so many different uh, experiences of all these different musicians. You know, we are all right. musicians. We're all on a musical journey through our life, but boy, our paths are very different. And a lot of times they intersect for a little while and then we carry on and we move on, you know? So I, a friend did an incredible job, you know, with me, you know, take grabbing me by the hand and taking me on a certain path. And, and I think that it really shows uh, in the outcome. Yeah. You know, cause when, um, when Liberty approached me on this situation and says, Hey, I'm involved in this amazing documentary. He went on to say about the hired gun. He goes, I feel it works hand in hand and is very apropos in the style of what Jackie's groove is all about because what Jackie's groove is all about. And I am proud to be one of the hired grunts or the hired guns, if you will, um, that, you know, we've, I have always spotlighted and always um, shared the stories with my brothers and sisters who are below the marquee who celebrate the people above the marquee. But the thing is we are, we go, we're unsung heroes to a certain level. I mean, I love the tagline, out of the shadows, into the spotlight. It couldn't be more relevant to what it is out there. You know, I look at all the different groups that you've been with, and do me a favor, and, and Rudy, share with the listeners, what was the timeline you know, of when you hit the big time, per se? Um, was yeah. it first um, Ozzy, then Quiet, and then uh, and then White Snake? Share with us your timeline. Yeah, well, the, the big time, definitely Ozzy, but I would have not been a member of Ozzy if I had not already been a member of the Randy Rhodes Quiet Riot, you know, that era of Quiet Riot back in 78. And uh, to me, see, me playing with Randy back in 78, 79, right before he joined Ozzy, that created a trust factor between he and I. He knew my character. And and also my playing ability. So when it came time for Ozzy to find a bass player within 10 days of going on the road with the Blizzard of Oz uh, tour, uh, Randy kept saying, listen, Rudy is the guy. Because basically they needed somebody that not only could play the material, but also somebody who was not going to be a bad influence with mm-hmm. Ozzy. You know, was not going to be an, an alcoholic, a drug addict, not somebody who's right. going to disappear. You know, some you know, a flake, whatever. So that's how I got the gig, just based on Randy's trust in me and Sharon and Ozzy's trust in Randy. So Randy put put himself on the line. You know, say hey, you know you what? Know, the, and you and you made him proud, brother. Because the bottom line is, you know, it's it's who you know. But at the same time, too, once you get to the place that you know, you've got to be able to. To fill the shoes that you were there. I mean, oh, absolutely, I, I, absolutely. I, I love the line where it said, where you said on the documentary, a little spoiler alert. But when you said the fact that you went from sleeping on a sheet on a floor to living in the Osborne Mansion, what a tell, yeah. you know that that's a Cinderella story. Share with me yeah. how that yeah. felt. I mean, what was that timeline that you actually were on the floor? How long and uh, after yeah. that did you get into the mansion? Share with us. Yeah, I mean, not to sound like I'm making a plug, but actually. I wrote a book called Off the Rails about that, Plug, baby. that you know, about that era, which which is why I wrote the book to answer one question, which is that I, the number one question I get asked when I travel around the world is what was it like to play with Randy Rhodes? So mm-hmm. I sat down and I <laughs> in about 300 pages, I put it, I put it, you know, in writing. Uh, but what was it like? Well, can you imagine, you know, I'm sleeping on the floor. I can't, I only have enough money to eat. I got the first phone call from Sharon. Uh, I, I, at the time I was playing in a band called Angel. And I've, I was, I've always been a band guy. You know, to me, it's all about the band. Even if it's somebody else's band, if I, if, and, and trust me, I've been treated fantastic in other people's bands, you know. And when I say other people's band, it's like, you know, there was a legacy to it before I got there. You know, and but I didn't know about that. Only I only thing I knew was in starting a band and trying to make it in Los Angeles, which is the reason why I left home in Miami 
uh, and just uh, myself and just about everybody else that I know that came out of the uh, Hollywood Sunset Strip uh, band, you know, like the guys from Motley Crue and Rat and Dawkins and so on, you know, we all came from somewhere else and we moved to L.A. and we sacrificed everything. You know, uh, there was no plan B. Plan B was to make it. It wasn't like, well, if I don't make it, play music, maybe I'll become uh, an architect or a photographer. No, it was like, right. no, I'm going to be a musician. And that is it. If I would have had a plan B, I would have never hit the bottom, you know, rock bottom of sleeping on a sheet. You know, so I got the phone call from, from Sharon. And actually, I turned it down because I still wanted to be in a band, in Angel. Then yeah. I hang up the phone and Kevin goes, what, are you crazy? You turned down the gig? Did you even, you know, you even turned down the, the opportunity to put with Randy again. And I thought, oh, my God, I really blew it. So the next day, I get the call again. And it's Ozzy on the phone saying, listen, man, we, we auditioned a bunch of guys. And Randy says that you're the guy. And I said, uh, and I said yes, I'll, I'll be right over. So, so, so Randy picked me up and I went over and I hung out with Ozzy and Sharon and Randy and Tommy. Uh, and then Ozzy, you know, we had a conversation. And he's telling me all the plans for the band. And he's just, you know, we're just chatting. And he goes, listen, man, just do me a favor. Just be able to play. <laughs> because basically I had, the, I had the gig based on Randy's recommendation. Rudy, could you understand Ozzy? I mean, you have to you have to address the fact. I can, you know, want you to live with you know, I can only imagine how that would be to to sit there and listen to, you know, Ozzy talking to you and welcoming the band and saying, "Hey, man, just do your best. Do what you're hired to do." How long well, did it take I, you to? I haven't I mean, passed the audition it, yet. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Because I was saying, because how long did it take once he asked you to get through those doors? How long did it take you to? Realize the fact that you were actually working, set aside with Randy Rose, but you're actually working with Ozzy Osbourne. Was that an aha moment for you? Did you have to pinch yourself to believe that you were well, there? You know, I was so busy uh, because there were brand new songs to me, you know, like in, right. in less than 10 days. I have to dig in and, and become that missing piece of the puzzle. This mm -hmm. guy, not only, uh, not only musically, but also image-wise. You know, it, 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 it just, I came, you know, I, I, I was on the Sunset Strip. My, my thought of being a musician is what we would do on the Sunset Strip, which, which right. was almost, almost a parody of the real deal because we got it second-handed. You know, we would go to watch a concert and, and look up at, you know, at Led Zeppelin or Deep Purple and say, okay, right. this is how the, these guys behave and, and so we're going to do the same thing in, uh, in a club stage, you know. But what Sharon and Ozzy had in mind was the real deal. So I had to, like, really study and comprehend what the real deal rock musician is from mm -hmm. England, a place that I had never been to. There were certain things that we did on stage that were not proper to do on stage with Ozzy. And Sharon like took me to moving certain movement. For example, if you ever watch a, a Black Sabbath with Ozzy, old video, Ozzy would be like doing his thing with his hand and every other guy was just like standing still on stage. Of course, there was a lot of head banging going on, but not moving of around like, like guys leaning on each other, uh, you know, jumping on the, on the drum riser. That was metal. That was metal. And metal, you didn't do that. What we were doing with Quiet Riot was more glam, glam, right. you know, more like Bowie and and some Queen, you know, more over the top. And so I mm -hmm. had to, like, really get myself and, and absorb that really, really quickly how to be a metal musician, because I, I am an English metal musician, you know, right. the real deal, because I'm playing with Ozzy Osbourne. I cannot be flamboyant. You know, I'm not in Queen. I mean, more with a guy, you know, who's playing, who used to play with Black Sabbath. And that's that's the image that Sharon said, gee, this is what you must be and do. You know, when I used to play with, with Randy and I, in Quiet Riot, we were all over the place. We were like leaning on each other. I would go over right. to this side of the stage. Kevin, the same thing. Kevin would put, you know, 
uh, Randy sometimes on his shoulders, you know, stuff like, no, that was gone. You don't do that anymore. You are in a English heavy metal band, you know. So what you're telling me is that, that w- when you were on stage with Ozzy, even though we're talking about scripted, non-scripted, you knew your place. You, it was pretty much you knew what you couldn't, couldn't do. Were, they, were you forced upon that, or did you just respect the fact that that's the way it was? Well, first you have to respect it, you know. And I really appreciated it because, I, you know, there's so many things I, that were happening so quickly that I got basically a crash course is what it was. <laughs> You know, uh, there were so, there were things that you know. If you look at the history of Black Sabbath, they developed that during 15 years. By the time, of course, Lord, by the time that Ozzy had left the band, it was an evolution. Mine was more an adaptation. I had to adapt mm-hmm. immediately to it. There was no time to evolve. You know, you know, and, and and you think about it for a second here because. When you go, because you always had that look. I mean, it wasn't the fact that, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you had to change your whole wardrobe, per se, or the whole look of Rudy Sarzo. But what blows me out of the water, and you talk about cross cultures and learning about the English situation, me as a percussionist, a conguero, a timbarero, a bongocito, you know, all that situation, where a country that you came from. You're Cuban, brother. I mean, it's like, how much did you step out of your wheelhouse, or were you always the little, uh, you know, Cubano that loved rock and roll music where you weren't listening to cha-cha and bolero and so on? Was that part of your life at all? Or were you from the gate rock and roll? Uh, let me put it this way. When I first was exposed to rock and roll, I, I completely understood it. Um, what, what I took from listening to rock and roll was freedom. Freedom, you know, coming from a communist country, freedom is is, is very very rare. <laughs> it's not even a state of mind, you know. It's, it's uh, reality. Uh, and yeah, and the lack of freedom is reality. So, by yep. you know, we left Cuba in 1961. You know, we were under the you know a communist regime. So when I got to the United States and the Beatles. The whole British invasion started happening in 1964. I, boy, that was that was so joyful in so many levels, you know. Rudy, I'm that, gonna ju- yes. I'm gonna yes. jump in real quick and interrupt you. We're we're coming out of segment one. This you see how fast this goes. But I want to pick that up because we have a mutual friend. Oh, we're gonna find out if he's a mutual friend. Another Latino that, believe it or not, was a pure rock artist. We'll talk about that on the. Uh, on the second segment. So, guys, this is Jackie Batoni, Jackie's Groove, Bunch of Inner Talk Radio Network, with the legendary and iconic rock and roll bassist, Mr. Rudy Sarzo. Guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with the short message. Rudy, stay tight. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. Make this your vinyl night. I'm John G.R. Robinson, and every week, music creation comes alive through stories, experiences, and sounds when vinyl records filled our hearts and minds. 
My friends and I share our tips and techniques used in creation of iconic tracks for recording artists such as Michael Jackson, Eric Clapton, Quincy Jones, and Steve Winwood, to name a few. Vinyl has emerged hot, and the soul of vinyl defines art and passion which burns deepest at night. Tune in every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on entertalkradio.com. Hey, it's Carney Wilson, and you're listening to Jackie's Groove with Jackie Bertone. Welcome to Jackie's Groove. Come journey with us through the rhythm of the music business with your host, Jackie Bertone. All right, let's talk about classic rock and roll anthems. That was one of them, guys. I mean, how many times have you heard that song on a plethora of movies in your lifetime? And the person responsible for that groove behind that, that drum and that sound is my in-studio guest, Mr. Rudy Sarzo. Rudy, Rudy I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask him because I, I, this is on my mind. We talk about cross-cultures. Here I am, an Italian-Armenian, playing Latin music and playing a percussionist itself. We, we've got you, Rudy Sarzo, a Cuban... Um, uh, a, a Cuban descended person who's playing rock and roll. Yeah. Two friends, two friends of mine. I'm sure you know them also. My good friend of mine, Tito Puente Jr., who oh, grew yeah, up I, and who grew up and li- nothing listened to nothing but your music. I mean, his I he was he was he was floored, man. Two weeks ago, he had a chance to have dinner with Nico Brain, you know, one of his favorite rock drummers of all time. You know, and uh, and and then then friends of mine like Will Calhoun. African American brothers that are playing straight rock and roll out of the Bronx and in New York City. And so, with that said, you stepping out of your wheelhouse, as I said to you on the first segment, what was coming through the speakers at the Sarzo household? What were you raised or forced to listen to growing up before rock and roll infected your life? Okay. Uh, well, going back to your first statement, I'm, I'm not. I'm not of Cuban descent. I'm, I, I've, I was born in Cuba. I didn't live ah. until I, I was like almost eleven. So you know. Latin music is really rooted in my DNA uh, because that's all we, we had. I mean, you know, during the 50s, we would have certain artists drop by mm-hmm. to visit Cuba and, you know, American artists. And, uh, but it, it, it was, you know, and we had a couple of like uh, uh, rock and Espanol guys like uh, mm-hmm. Luis Aguilé, Luis Blanco, you know, they were kind of like, you know, elf, they are local Elvis Presley, you know, but it wasn't until the British invasion. I was living in New Jersey, in Western ah. New York, New Jersey at the time, and you know, living right across, you know, the city on the Hudson River, you really felt the energy that happened right after the Beatles, you know, played in Ed Sullivan, which was to me, it was like the perfect storm, in the sense that, you know. The nation was really in a major funk right after Kennedy got shot in November, you know. And so, you know, we had the worst holidays, you know, Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. Christmas, New Year's Eve. It was a it was a downer so completely. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, come these guys. And it was kind of like, you know. It was kind of like the light of the end of the tunnel. Yes, right. yes, we're gonna, you know, let's put a focus into this, and and it, it, it was a, a joyful moment. Ha, have you had a chance to watch the uh, the Ron Howard documentary yet about yeah, the absolutely. Beatles? Yeah, of I, you know, one of the things that I got about it was they were badasses. They really were. If you, if you look at Ringo's playing live, it was just it was like you know he was. Playing his ass off, McCartney didn't even look at the neck of the bass once right. in the whole documentary while he's singing. You know, they were so tight and so ferocious that I think it really struck stroke something with 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 the, with the guys, the kids. We wanted we wanted to create that energy ourselves, you know. And there was a sense of freedom 
so much freedom in it. You know, I mean, it's like you play the music, but people were watching you play it. They weren't really necessarily dancing to it. I don't right. think I don't think any of us danced to the Beatles. No, we we played the Beatles music, and we had people watch us play Beatles music. So it was that experience that which was much different from the Latino, you know, dance bands. Uh, R- R- yes, Rudy. What is what is your descent? And I, I I mistakenly said from Cuban, thinking that you were Cuban. What is your nationality? I'm Cuban. Okay. I was born in Cuba in Havana. And that's it. Na- okay. Nineteen fifty. So yeah. You- yeah. You know, and, and when you when you understood or when that music, this the boleros and stuff that came through that, did you mm-hmm. get that music? Was that in your soul, or did you were you striving for something different before the Beatles? Were you striving for something different than what you grew up listening to as a child? Uh, well, before the Beatles, we had these TV shows called uh, like uh, you know like Hoot Nanny. Was more mm-hmm. like folk, folk, folk bands, you know. Uh, the Jimmy Dean Show, which was kind of like country western at the time, you know, they were guitar oriented music, right. which is what I really gravitated to. I tried playing the trumpet as as, as a kid in uh, in junior high, and I just mm-hmm. didn't have the lungs for that. Or and right. my mom used to shove me in the uh, in the closet. That's <laughs> it. I have I have eight millimeter. Films of that <laughs> happening. So, you know, the Crazy. guitar w- was such a much more subtle instrument to have in an apartment in West New York, New Jersey, than blowing on right. a trumpet. So that was, yeah, so that made more, way more sense than anything else. Now, by the time that in 1966, my family moved back to Miami, that's when I seriously became, a, a, you know, pursuing a, a music career. I don't know. I was a kid. It, this, this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to be in a band. A bunch of guys having a great time in a band. I was playing guitar poorly, but nevertheless, I was playing guitar. And I, uh, back in the day, each block in the neighborhood had a band, a little band. Cool. That was our social network, being in a band. Us Cuban kids being in bands. And we were not mm-hmm. playing Latin music. We were playing rock and roll, British invasion right. music, you know, Yardbirds and Stones and, you know, whatever. And the Beatles, of Absolutely. course, you know. Some who, and so, so I went to my my blocks uh, band that was in rehearsing in somebody's garage. I introduced myself. I had just arrived from New Jersey, moved into a neighborhood in Miami uh, and little Havana area. And mm-hmm. they go, well, we got too many guitar players. Uh, if you play the bass, you can be in the band. So. Somebody else decided for me <laughs> that I was going to be a bass player, and I, well, I want to thank them for that. And so I did. I started playing the bass. Of course, I was playing the bass on a actual guitar with only four right. strings. But then I, you know, I started working and got myself a job and and picked up some enough money for an actual professional bass, which was a Fender Jazz bass. You know that I that that I had from 1967 on until. I was playing with with Ozzy, you know, and so you still you know, on that I, bass. You still have that bass. I don't even remember where it is ah. because you know what, what, what this is what happened to a lot of us from the sixties on until the eighties. We have to Frankenstein our instruments. We have to start putting like uh, like uh, uh, preamps and changing the bridge and just to keep up with the other basses that were being offered and that were like being played on records, you know, with preamps and, you know, like Alembics and music men. So by the time I was done with that Fender, it was not really an original or original Fender, you know, so it had lost a lot of its value, you know? Right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so yes. Now I wanted to ask you this also too, because um, it, it, again, I'm going to ask you right now ahead of time. We are only halfway through the second day. This is going to be – one hour is not going to be anywhere near enough with you, my friend. There's just too many questions coming in all over the world. And, uh, and so I'm going to extend the olive uh, branch right now, and I'm going, to, I'm going to invite you back okay. so that the listeners can really hear everything about Rudy because, I mean, I've got, I've got two hours worth of questions right here. But I'm going to ask this first right here so I can jump in here. Let's look at Angel. Let's look at Whitesnake. Let's look at Ozzy, and let's look at Quiet Riot. Out of all four of those notable bands – what was your favorite to play with? And I know that's an unfair yeah. question, but what was your favorite group to play with and why? 
Very simple. It's, it's Ozzy, because if without me playing an Ozzy, we wouldn't even have this, uh, this conversation. There you go. Very simple. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Biggest, I mean, biggest... Not only because it was my first break, but look, mm-hmm. I'm playing with Randy Rhodes, and Randy Rhodes is becoming a legend. Right in front of me every single night on stage. You know, I mean, this is back in the day when there was no social media. So Randy's legend was built on the audience coming to see the show, not knowing what to expect. They just know that this guy from Black Sabbath is going to be in town. They show up and they see Randy Rhodes and they go, oh, my God. You know, and then they, they call their friends. And back in the day, we used to do touring that was regional. We would do like one leg of the tour would be the Northeast. The second would right. be the Midwest. And not like it is nowadays. Nowadays, we're all scattered all over the place, you know. Of course. And, and what would happen is, you know, somebody would call up and say, hey, listen, I just saw this guitar play Randy Rhodes, man. And tomorrow they're playing like an hour away from us, you know. Let's go. Let's go and catch it. So we would start seeing like the familiar faces in the audience, you know, because now now we got a following. You know, and that's how Randy built this legend right there every single night in front of an audience. Rudy, where were you that fateful night when you found out that Randy passed? Uh, I was in in the bus. Uh, I found out he passed because it's actually it's the opening to my book. And, you know, that's one of the dark dark places that I really like to avoid getting into because it's, you know, if you ask me a question like that, I'm not going to just give you an answer. I'm going to go back. Of course. Of course. You know, and, but anyway, just for the benefit of just answering your question. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, you know, what happened was it's, it's, uh, it, it was, we're, we're, you know, in a nutshell, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to bypass all the details, Please. but you know, we were in uh we had just been driving, or we had been in a bus from Knoxville, Tennessee, down to Kissimmee, near Orlando. Mm-hmm. And the bus driver had been driving all night long, nonstop. And when he got there, he offered, well, when he got there, there being the actual depot, bus depot of the bus company that, was, uh, that owned the tour bus that we were on. And uh, they happen to have their headquarters in Kissimmee. And uh, a lot of the homes in that area have a landing strip as part mm-hmm. of, their, of their property. And so there was a not only a landing strip, but there was also a hangar and with a Cessna in it. And a bus driver uh, grabs the Cessna and invites uh, the tour manager and Don Airy, our keyboard player, to uh, just to go up on a on a on a little you know you know just a little ride around the countryside, and so they do that, and then on the second ride, he offered uh, to take up Rachel, Rachel Youngblood, which was uh, Sharon's uh, housekeeper, but also her best friend and our wardrobe lady. I mean, everybody loves love Rachel, you know. And she would travel with us and take care of, you know, things for us. And uh, and, and Randy. So when Randy hears that Rachel's going to go up, and Randy goes, oh, you know, I'm, I want to come along too, you know. And so he grabs his camera to take photos. And I'm, I'm in my bunk. This is like 8 o'clock in the morning. And I'm asleep, and Randy yells at me and says, hey, you know, to, you know, to come and join, and join him in, the, in this ride. And I turned it down because, you know, I'm, I'm from Florida, so I really wasn't interested in getting up on a Cessna and flying around the right. place that I, just, that I had just recently left. <laughs> it's like, a, I've seen right. this, I've done that. You know, I'll get, a, I'll get off the bus when we get to the hotel, and I'm going to lay, lay by the pool. That, that, that was my plan. So I closed my curtains, and that was the last time I saw, I saw Randy. You know, I went back to sleep, and I'm awakened by... by, by by a boom, a boom that shakes the bus. And I thought, oh, my God, we, we must have been in a in a car crash here. You know, we must have hit something on the freeway. I thought we were moving. I had been asleep. And I opened up my, 
my bunk curtain and my bunk was right next to the back lounge of the tour bus. And I, as I opened my curtain, I, I see the, the door open and Sharon Ozzy storm out to see what was going on. And we, uh, Sharon opens the, the door that leads from the bunk area to the front lounge. And it, the front lounge is all covered with glass. And I look to my right and the passenger side window have been blown out. Still, we have no idea what's going on here. You know, then we realize we're still at this place. You know, we're not on the freeway. And I look, I, I, I look over and, you know, outside of the bus and I see our tour manager. He's, he's on his knees looking away from the bus, behind the bus in a direction. And he's going, they're gone. He's yelling, they're gone, they're gone. And he's pulling his hair, and I still don't know what's going on. So the bus driver's wife, strange wife, they have been separated now, and he was trying to, like, make up uh, make up with her, you know. Mm-hmm. And she was, like, frozen in on the door, you know, that leads to the outside of, of the bus. So Sharon t- pushes her to the side to go outside to see what's going on, and we followed through, and, and that's when we realized that the crash had happened. You know, and I look over, I look over, and I see there's a house that's that's next to the bus where the bus is parked, and it's on flames. The house is on fire. The garage is on fire because right. the, the the plane the plane clipped the bus at about I would say about close to. Yeah, five and a half feet. I'm like five ten. So I I put my nose next to the point of impact of the wing, the tip of the wing, and it's about my nose, uh, as high as my nose. And I mean, I did that later on, you know, because we 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 had to stay there for hours, waiting for the police, waiting for fire trucks to arrive. You know, it's 1982, so there's no cell phones, and you know rapid communication means of rapid rapid communication so we have to wait for neighbors neighbors Rudy, i'm gonna jump in i'm gonna jump in real quick brother because we're coming out of the second segment man this is like i've got chills on my body so when we come back on this next segment we'll pick up uh, where we left off right there I, I hope i didn't bring up a sore point now but i think the audience needs to know what's going on that's the answer i got so we'll come back on segment number three i want to pick that part up if you're so willing to do so so jackie yeah. Tony, jackie's groove Intertalk Radio Network with Mr. Rudy Sarza. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear, host of Sound Experience here on Intertalk Radio. And Source Connect by Source Element is the essential tool that we use to link between my studio in Austin, Texas, and the WS radio station in San Diego. Now, with Source Connect, not only can we communicate in real time and with HD audio, but it's synced up and is of a high enough quality that I can use it for real time ADR work, remote recording, and overdubbing. And it even allows me to remotely control a DAW. Source Connect by Source Element, affordable, high quality audio and video connection over the internet for all of your production needs. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on Intertalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Make this your vinyl night. I'm John G.R. Robinson, and every week, music creation comes alive through stories, experiences, and sounds when vinyl records filled our hearts and minds. My friends and I share our tips and techniques used in creation of iconic tracks for recording artists such as Michael Jackson, Eric Clapton, Quincy Jones, and Steve Winwood, to name a few. Vinyl has emerged hot, and the soul of vinyl defines art and passion, which burns deepest at night. Tune in every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on entertalkradio.com. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. 
pitbullaudio.com. Hi, this is Shelly Sondheim, President and CEO of CSM Words and Music. You're listening to Jackie's Groove with Jackie Bertone. <laughs> Come journey with us through the rhythm of the music business with your host, Jackie Bertoni. Everybody, welcome back to segment number three of Jackie's Groove. This is Jackie Bertoni with Mr. Rudy Sarzo. Hey, Rudy, you know, I want to just, you know, we're here to promote one thing, um, but we got to promote a thousand things. Rudy is a, a, a prominent musician in the new documentary coming out June 29th to 300 screens nationwide called The Hired Gun. Out of the shadows and the spotlight. You can go on to fathomevents.com. That's F A T H O M events.com. Go and search out Hired Gun, the movie. And then type in your zip code, and it'll tell you where you can see this amazing documentary. As I said earlier, I've been privy to it. I've seen it three times. I haven't seen the big screen yet, and I know I will plan to. But, it, Rudy, brother, I, I, I'm giving you the virtual hug through the, uh, through the airways right now because the story you're telling about Randy and stuff, you know, it's, it's something that you tell that whole story itself. And we talked about on the last segment, this is how you started your book out. Let's talk about your book for a second. Let's let the people know where they can get that book. And how long it's been a bestseller out there? Yeah, it's actually, uh, it's been either any, anywhere from number one uh, to like number seven on the heavy metal genre on Amazon, which uh, for over a year now, uh, it's available in both on Kindle download and also on, on, on print. All they need to do is just go to Amazon. Also, I have it available. The only place to get it signed is uh, through the Chromacast website which I have uh, some products there. I have, like, guitar bags and, you know, uh, strings are coming out and picks and stuff like that. So if you go to Chromacast, that's C-H-R-O-M-A-C-A-S-T, and just look under Rudy Sarzo Artist, you'll see all my uh, products there. And one of them will be the signed book, autograph, and it comes with a poster also. And Rudy, we'll also put that URL also on the network site so people can always refer back to that. And as soon as we archive uh, the show later on this afternoon, I will send you the link um, so you can do with what you'd like, put it on your social media. Let me ask you this question, my friend. Everything that you've done has been, you know, uh, on grandiose levels, huge. Does Rudy Sarzo have a bucket list? Is there something that you need to do before you get called home? Um... Two things. Two things are pretty much at the top of a bucket list. One is to play in in a free Cuba, you know, a non-communist mm. Cuba. That huh. that's that's like top top bucket list for me, you know. And I'm not talking about just open relations. I'm talking about freedom, you know, no more communism, you know. Just just like like I have in Russia, I I've toured Russia so many times, and it's such a joy to play. For people who used to uh, put their lives in, uh, on the line just to listen to rock and roll, just to like own a vinyl and listen to it in their basement or cellar, knowing mm-hmm. that they that they could get arrested and sent to uh, sent, sent to Siberia just for that. So to me, it, you know, every time I, I, I tour Russia, we 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 see in the audience, you know, the the people that lived through that era and their children who have right. who never experienced that, but they really appreciate the music, you know. So I, I hope to do that someday, in in my country of birth. And the From other your lips one, to God's ears. <laughs> thank you. And and the other one is to uh, to just get rid of to abolish kill shelters in the United States because I, I, yeah. I am involved. I am involved with, with, you know, 
with, uh, with shelters. And one, one of the organizations that I'm very much involved with is the Linda Blair organization for, you know, for sheltering uh, dogs and cats, you know, animals in general. She, uh, she's relentless about it. She's, she's an incredible woman. And that's one thing you and I have in common. We love our little fur babies. I mean, they're, um, if, they, if, if only humans had the hearts of a dog, my brother, this place would be peaceful. We call Earth, you know. And, uh, uh, I hear you. Yeah, you know. Hey, can I ask you a question also, too, Brother Rudy? You know, we always say things about, you know, about how it's like to work with anything else. But was Ozzy a true homeboy, meaning the fact is that did he hang out with the band on tour? Or was he, you know, were you guys uh, co- uh, compartmentalized? Away from him and Sharon. I I gotta tell you, when I first started touring with Ozzy, Sharon, because you know Randy had been with Ozzy for about two years by then, and 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 Tommy Aldrich was a total veteran. He had been doing it since Black Rock, right. Arkansas. So Ozzy needed a drinking buddy. So Sharon asked me to become Ozzy's drinking buddy, and. Hey, you know, keeping up with Ozzy's drinking almost killed me, to be honest. No, with no, you. no shit, no, no you know, doubt. Yeah, so, so it, the, the the best candidates were actually the road crew because they were English. They they knew how to drink. You know, they had been right. drinking like that. You know, since they were babies. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no doubt. You know, you know, the, uh, you know. I mean, it it, it it was really, really amazing. You know, touring, touring with the crew and touring with, with, with Ozzy and the guys and stuff, you know. And uh, yeah. uh, Ozzy was the most down-to-earth person I've ever... Well, him and Ronnie James Dio. Yeah, I heard. The most down-to-earth of, that I've ever toured with. I, I got to tell you this. One time, Sharon, you know, Ozzy was, was, was kind of like lonely and... and and sad, and Sharon says, okay, I'm going to fly in your best friend. And Ozzy was all happy, and the guy comes in, and he's hanging in the bus with us for a few days, and so I I, I ask him, you know, hey, what do you do back home? And he says, oh, I sell vegetables on the side of the road. And I thought, oh, my God, how, how cool of Ozzy that his best friend is a farmer. That's what he is. You know, with Ozzy, it's all about the quality of the time that you spend with somebody. It's not about who you are, what you do. It doesn't matter to him. It's about exactly. how much he enjoys the company. You know, and, and I say that, Rudy, because, you know, it's a cool kind of a dichotomy here because I my legacy goes back with the Beach Boys and Brian Wilson. And people mm-hmm. have always, always kind of not compared, but said side by side that the minds of Brian Wilson and Ozzy Osbourne were from the same loins. You know, they... A little touch, you know, yeah, and at the I, same time, too, because me with me, I can pick up the phone and I can talk to Brian like you can talk to Ozzy and realize the fact that they're just normal people. Yes. And uh, and the reason why Ozzy loves being around you and and, uh, and Brian loves being around me is because we don't have our noses up their rear end. Yeah, We're just brothers in music, man. And, you know, and, 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 and I, I want to take one second. I want to bring on the CEO of our network, Florentino Buenaventura, who's a big fan of uh, Rich, uh, you know, of, of uh, Rudy Sarzo. And so, uh, and everything that you've been encompassed in. So, do me a quick favor, Rudy. Say hi to Florentino. Florentino, say hi to Rudy, please. Hey, Rudy, how you doing, brother? Hey, I'm blessed. How are you doing, Florentino? Uh, same as well, man. Like I said, we've we've enjoyed some some incredible talent, and 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 Jackie is not off by base saying that I'm a big fan. I've been for for a long while, and uh, you know, it's just I'm a bass player as well. So, oh, wow. you, know, you definitely, you know, we there's always that joke that you know the bass players don't get the get the the, the cred that they should, but the, you've definitely proven that's not the case, man. So I appreciate you, brother. And, yeah, I, I, I've always thought the same thing about Paul McCartney. I don't think Paul gets enough credit. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, they, they know him for the songwriting, but do they really know he plays bass? Yeah, so that's that's definitely definitely the case. <laughs> but uh, you know, this this interview has been. Uh, a, a great one definitely one of the the, the tops on our on our network and we really appreciate you out here and uh you know what i'm, I'm gonna take a moment to be jackie a little bit i'm gonna i'm gonna go off base a little bit jackie and i want to ask you go a ahead. question um 
because we do a lot of work with the schools, and we're actually uh, planning our, our, our summer NAM right now with uh, with the NAM Foundation, and that's they're all about uh, promoting education in the schools. You know, you've you've done a lot with with you know with with teaching and different things from what I've you know what I, what I've read and heard. What's your recommendation? What do you you know if if someone said, "Hey, look, Rudy, I, I want to be a player like you." What do you, what would you say to that uh, that uh, young individual right now? That's such a good question because when I be, when I started playing, things were completely different. I didn't have the resources that I have now. I I, I devote I devote every moment that I can focus on studying music. That's what I that's what I devoted on. Uh, there's so many resources online. To do that, free resources, free. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that it's it's just it's up to the individual. There's no excuses anymore not to get a music education. And to me, you know, music, uh, you know, it's it, it's you must know what you're playing. You must understand it. You know, yeah. People say, yeah, music is all about emotion, this and that. No, 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 no. So is the other art forms, but. Correct. You know, if you're going to be a painter, you just can't be throwing paint, you know, against a canvas, hoping that you're going to get a must masterpiece. You have to study everything that has happened before you. So the same thing is with with being a musician. And, you know, there's only 12 notes, but there's it's a, a lifetime of possibilities for you to create with those 12 notes and, and, the, and the polyrhythms and styles and lyric that go with with those 12 notes. It's just mind-boggling. And the more you study it, the better you understand what your possibilities are as yeah. a musician. One, if, if I, if, if, I, I hope it doesn't sound like a plug, but if anybody out there thinking, where does Rudy Sarzo go to learn music on the internet? Can I mention the website? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. please do. It, it says, it's Rick Beato, Everything Music. And it is about everything music. It's about composition. It's about music theory, reharmonization. It's for bass players, guitar players, drummers, and, you know, keyboard players. If if you if you play music, this is the place to go to get a, a, a free education from somebody who really devotes his time and energy into teaching every single day. You know, it, it's, it's an amazing resource. Yeah, yeah. So so that's what I would recommend to today's musician. And also, build your trust factor. It doesn't matter how great of a musician you are. If you're not trusted, if you're not trustworthy, if you're not dependable, you're not going to get the gig. Or, you're, or you might get the gig, but not keep it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, well, well said, brother. Well said. I don't want to commandeer Jackie's interview because I'm I'm sitting here enjoying it. But that was the one thing that kind of, you know, touched my heart. I wanted to, to find out from you and, and really have that shared with all of our, our listening audience. And definitely appreciate everybody who's supporting us and, you know, making this happen. Because, again, our, our goal is much like Hired Gun is to spotlight those that have been in the shadows but ba- uh, been, been the foundation of music since you know you know day one you know those those people who are not necessarily the names on the marquee but definitely power the names on the marquee so thanks brother Absolutely. appreciate it we'll talk Thank soon i got some things i wanted to run by you uh, offline as well okay god bless you, god bless you. Brother. perfect and uh and speaking of blessings brother again i i have to thank you rudy you know for i mean we've been blessed jackie's groove has been blessed i mean we've hosted 14 members um of uh rock and roll hall of fame inductees and uh and then adding this to my bucket list, because I've been a fan of yours and your music all these years. I'm sure we've run into each other over the years itself, um, you know, with me, with my t- time with Tower of Power and, and my time hanging out with my good friend of mine, David Lee Roth. And, and I know we've, you know, we've bumped into each other, you know, somewhere down the line. But again, too, this whole show was a base to be talking about you and the hired gun. But, man, I got to tell you, there, it, we've, we've touched on nothing per se, about the, the career of Rudy Sarzo. So I'm going to say it again. I'm going to have my production get a hold of your people. I, that sounds so Hollywood. And I want to get this back on the line again because the, the, the people want to hear more about you and White Snake, you and Quiet Riot, you and Angel, and you and Ozzy. Something yeah, to be missed all together. And, and, and Dio, and I'm not done yet because I am currently a member of the Guess Who. So that's who I'm playing with right now. Wow. 
So this is where we're going to bring it back. So will you accept an invitation to come back in the very near future, Brother Boy? Absolutely. My pleasure. With that, you know, you and our friends now on Facebook, we can share things together. We can chop it up. You're an absolute gentleman, man. You're an angel. You're, you know, you're a spirit of God. Uh, you love little fur babies. And you're a musician, man, you know. And you are, I don't want to say the young sing heroes, man, because you've had your you've had your day in the spotlight, and your spotlight will always shine above you. So with that said, brother, thank you, thank you, thank you from the entire crew at Intertalk Radio, Jackie Bertoni, myself. And uh, we love you, brother. You know, from, from my lips to God's ears, may you stay healthy. May your music reign superior and uh, and just keep that spirit you've got going in that heart, man, because it's, it's ridiculous. I feel like I've known you forever. So with that said, everybody, please say goodbye to Mr. Rudy Sarzo and say thank you. And Rudy, I will send you that link once we get it going. And as I always say in all my closing um, interviews, Rudy, peace through music. I love you, brother. God bless. Love you, Jack. God bless. Much love. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al DiMiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on? Hi, this is Tim Dolbear from Eclectica Studios. I'm a full-time mixing and recording engineer. I work with Grammy winners, labels, and indie artists using state-of-the-art digital mixing and restoration tools and the very best in analog gear. Really, though, it's my ability to bring tracks to life and fulfill your vision for your music. This has made me sought after by producers and artists worldwide. So spend your time working on music and not chasing a mix down a rabbit hole. Go to timdolbear.com and check out our free one song mix offer you know what's all around you every waking moment of your life marketing you're choking on it i'm scott robertson and when it comes to strategic pr branding and marketing i've seen it all and actually i'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps join me each week on may the best brand win right here on inner talk radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. 